Hi, welcome back to the revolution and welcome to cancer season. Oh boy, it has already been quite eventful. I apologize for my tardiness this month. Uh, I've had some pretty crazy things going on, but cancer season as always has brought a calm and a fury. So I was thinking in keeping with that theme, that we could do a little reading. Let's read from the Odyssey, and hopefully that makes sense already to those of you who have read it before, but I find it to be very relevant for Cancer season. Uh, be a little forgiving of the strange names if you've never read any Greek work, um, but I'm sure, I'm sure you can follow along somewhat if you know about the Sack of Troy. But there are some gems here in the next couple of pages, and have a listen. Book one, The Boy and the Goddess. Tell me about a complicated man. Muse, tell me how he wandered and was lost when he had wrecked the town of Troy, when where he went and who he met, the pain he suffered in the storms at sea, and how he worked to save his life and bring his men back home. He failed to keep them safe, Poor fools. They ate the sun god's cattle and the god kept them from home. Now, goddess child of Zeus, tell the old story for our modern times. Find the beginning. All the other Greeks who had survived the brutal sack of Troy sailed safely home to their own wives, except this man alone. Calypso, a great goddess, had trapped him in her cave. She wanted him to be her husband. When the year rolled round in which the gods decreed he should go home to Ithaca, his troubles still went on. The man was friendless. All the gods took pity except Poseidon's anger never ended until Odysseus was back at home. But now the distant Ethiopians who lived between the sunset and the dawn were worshiping the sea god with a feast. A hundred cattle and a hundred rams there sat the god delighting in his banquet. The other gods were gathered on Olympus in Father Zeus's palace. He was thinking of fine, well-born Aegisthus, who was killed by Agamemnon's famous son, Orestes. He told the deathless gods, this is absurd that mortals blame the gods. They say we cause their suffering, but they themselves increase it by folly. So, Aegisthus overstepped, he took the legal wife of Agam Agamemnon, then killed the husband when he came back home, although he knew that it would doom them all. We gods had warned Aegisthus, we sent down perceptive Hermes, who flashed into sight and told him not to murder Agamemnon or court his wife. Orestes would grow up and come back to his home and take revenge. Aegisthus would not hear that good advice. But now his death has paid all debts. Athena looked at him steadily and answered, Father, he did deserve to die. Bring death to all who act like him. But I am agonizing about Odysseus and his bad luck. For too long he has suffered with no friends. See all around him, see on every side. Out on an island where a goddess lives, daughter of fearful Atlas, who holds up the pillars of the sea and knows its depths. Those pillars keep the heaven and earth apart. His daughter holds that poor unhappy man and tries beguiling him with gentle words to cease all thoughts of Ithaca. But he longs to see even just the smoke that rises from his own homeland, and he wants to die. You do not even care, Olympian. Remember how he sacrificed to you on the broad plain of Troy beside his ships? So why do you dismiss Odysseus? Daughter, the cloud god said, you must be joking, since how could I forget Odysseus? He is more sensible than other humans and makes more sacrifices to the gods, but Lord Poseidon rages, unrelenting. Because Odysseus destroyed the eye of godlike Pophemus, his own son, the strongest of the Cyclops, whose mother, Thusa, is a sea nymph, child of forests. 
Let me continue. So now Poseidon prevents Odysseus from reaching home, but does not kill him. Come then, we must plan how can he get back home. Poseidon must give up his anger since he cannot fight alone against the will of all the gods. Athena's eyes lit up and she replied, Great father, if the blessed gods at last will let Odysseus return back home, then hurry, we must send our messenger Hermes, the giant slayer. He must swoop down to Ogygia right away and tell the beautiful Calypso we have formed a firm decision that Odysseus has waited long enough. He must go home and I will go to Ithaca to rouse the courage of his son and make him call a meeting and speak out against the suitors who kill his flocks of sheep and longhorn cattle unstoppably. Then I will send him off to Pylos and to Sparta to seek news about his father's journey home and gain a noble reputation for himself. With that, she tied sandals on her feet, the marvelous golden sandals that she wears to travel sea and land as fast as wind. She took the heavy bronze-tipped spear she uses to tame the ranks of warriors with whom she is enraged. Then from the mountains down, she sped to Ithaca and stopped outside Odysseus's court, bronze spear in hand. Let's stop there. So, what was that all about? Well, the Odyssey is about a guy, a guy who wants to get back home and it feels like the ocean will not cooperate. It feels like the sea at every moment is working against him. It feels like the more he struggles to get back home, the more stuck he becomes. He sees everyone around him go home. He sees everyone around him get what they want, right? But he himself struggles. He himself, it's obstacle after obstacle. It feels like these are teachable moments, but he's just a human. He's not trying to have teachable moments. He just wants to have that Cancerian need. He wants to fulfill his Cancerian need to go home. So if the ocean is your home, but the ocean is fighting you from going home, what do you do? How do you maneuver? Cancer season is the source of life or it is the wave that drowns you. The way to connect in a season where you are either riding high on the wave or getting rolled by the wave means that you have to get really observant. You have to be like a cancer. Cancers are frighteningly observant. They are always putting together some sort of personality profile of what you are, who you are, if for no other reason than to understand you, but also to have you somewhat figured out. What does that mean? That means that people will also want you to go the extra mile of doing the hard work of being really observant so you can figure them out. They don't want to tell you things. No one wants to tell each other anything. Remember, Gemini season, talk to everyone, say everything, no secrets. Don't tell them if you don't want them to tell the world. Cancer season goes really internal, not telling anyone anything, not trusting anyone. Family and home is everything because it is safety, security, and it's what you already know. Cancers can be extremely risk averse if they feel like the ocean is rolling them. They can also be extremely brave and very, very successful if they feel like they keep catching the wave on a high. Where you catch that wave and what this cosmic ocean does to you this month completely depends on what you want to get out of it. Sometimes, unpopular opinion, you need to get rolled. Sometimes the best thing that can happen to you is that you stop riding high and you get rolled by the wave and you hit the rocks on the bottom because those wounds are the wounds that when you tend to them, you will learn something about yourself, you will learn something about how you got the wound, you will perhaps understand that rock better. But with that adversity, become that adversity becomes your strength for when you hit that high wave again. That's one way to look at it unpopular opinion, right? The other 
I'm just waiting for it. The other way that you can look at it is things are going to be either great, feeling super, super good, or you are getting sucked all the way into the past. So what's the danger of the wave rolling you this month? It's that retrograde. It's that Neptune retrograde that you probably feel already. Now it's not even about you wanting the past. Now it's not even about somebody else wanting to come back into your life from the past. It's the past is catching up with you, with all of you, with that person, you and everybody else. It's not, it's not anyone doing anything now. It's very palpably the universe just doing as it wants. That's why the way I put it on Instagram is the mom is home now. Just you can hold her hand and she will guide you through the month. But if you start to struggle against mom, mother nature, and this is something that the Odyssey refers to again and again, has its grudges. It holds its grudges if you show disrespect. It holds anger if you are not in accordance with the Tao. That's the easiest way to put it, right? So you are expected during cancer season to act right because if you don't act right you're going to get the blowback right away right so for example let's start with aries right so aries this is a season where you will want to use your weaponry and you will see the passive aggressive you will see everyone moving sideways like a cancer and it will irritate you because you like to move forward. You can get stuck this season just telling everybody and pointing out that they're moving sideways. I don't think they can help it. The reason you see it so clearly is because even in cancer season, you can't move any other way but forward. So you may feel like you're trying to get a lot done, but no one around you is cooperating. No one around you can quite seem to get it together. So the happiest that you can make yourself in this season is to not struggle to bring everyone along with your good idea. Not to struggle to bring everyone along uh, on the straight road ahead. They have a lot going on. And because a lot of that emotional stuff is gonna go right over your head or right under your feet, depending on how high you're flying, there's really no point in criticizing or trying to bring people along on that ride. They're not ready. They don't want it. They're going to get motion sick if you push too hard. In relationships, in friendships, at work, expect that people are dealing a lot with their own internal emotional intimacy issues and they're not quite ready to rev the way you want to. Good. Now, Taurus. So. It's great to walk into Gemini season. By the end of Gemini season, you guys start to get a little bit fatigued. Cancer season starts and you think, oh, I'll be able to relax, but you are keenly aware that it's not going to last very long. You know that you're about to go up on a wave of cardinal water and it's frightening. And for a lot of you, this may have already started because you're either dealing with Cancers or Capricorns because they're going through such huge changes and can uh, Taurus gets scared watching another sign go through huge changes even so you you by association are disconcerted you're you're starting to look at cancer season like oh boy okay you know it's been a lot I need some rest I don't need to surf right now and unfortunately we're going surfing we may be surfing backwards even your video is going to be called motion sick. Sorry. Okay. Moving on. So Gemini. So your season is over. Our season is over. It has been difficult, to say the least. The last part may have felt like someone wanted to rip your skin off. Uh, Ta-da! Caterpillar to butterfly. So now we're the butterfly. Because now we're the butterfly, there's a few things that we need to get used to. Now we have wings. Now we are very mobile. And we can use cancer water to keep propelling forward, or we can drown. 
if we don't let go of our grudges, if we don't let go of our hang-ups. If we go into cancer season with grudges, they will... So, you may have felt like towards the end of Gemini season, someone just ripped your skin off, and now you have to, in some ways, relearn everything. That's what I mean about the caterpillar and the butterfly. The flying we do now is different. It has to do with us feeling like we tangibly grew up. Something happened during Gemini season, whether it was a personal accomplishment, whether it was an external tragedy, or anything in the middle that just snapped you. And now you just feel different. Good. Take cancer season to process it. Take cancer season to not care whether you're getting rolled by the wave or on the high of the wave. Pull back from all of that and use it as the rest that you need. The life of the party doesn't have to go to the after party. Good. Cancers. Boy, do you feel like people are just kind of trying to get to you? Do you feel like somehow you have been put more and more in a tower of success and now there are people trying to climb the tower? Do you feel like the attention is almost too much and now it's your season and now how is this going to go because the sun and the north node and everything is there? And then there is that Neptune retrograde. We have been working up to this cancer season for a while and I know you guys have been approaching with quite some trepidation and I get it. Just know that what you are spearheading change in whatever direction you're doing it now, as difficult as it may be, you are doing the right thing. Do not allow anyone to gaslight you and in your video, we'll talk about how you can best use your magic now to do what's best for you. Good. Leo, this is an interesting pre-party for you. So if Gemini is the party and Cancer is the after party, Leo is definitely the rock star after after party that goes until, you know, for the next evening. Of course you should be sleeping, of course you should be healing, of course you should be having all sorts of manner of whatever tests, whatever medical stuff, whatever dental stuff, whatever, whatever stuff. The rejuvenating hair masks, the, the skin stuff, everything to truly give yourself that royal prep that you want coming into your season. It is going to take you 30 days to get all of these pieces together for your part of the year to begin because people will be almost fatigued by the time we get to fixed fire but then fixed fire gives you another boost you can't give people another boost if you don't sleep first so while cancer season is doing this to everybody gemini shouldn't care they should be able to look past it from what they learned in their season and you should not care because you're asleep on a rock somewhere near the tide you see the tide but you're not trying to get in that tide good virgo it's a strange time because so many of you feel that the oz curtain is being pulled back and for some of you that's amazing because it means that you're finally getting credit for your work it means that you're finally being recognized as the person who's done so much for others, not so much. For others, it's revealing a character trait they probably wanted to hide. Either way, you have to know whether you're finally getting your due or something that needed to come to light is finally out. Just know that you have chosen this road of evolution, of wanting to be the most evolved, wanting to learn the most in the shortest amount of time. And of course, that student will get fatigue. Cancer season is a great time to admit that fatigue and go into a space like a cocoon of healing. And it doesn't matter if that cocoon is at the bottom of the ocean because within it, you are safe. And what you have to be cognizant of is to not let the pressure of the outside get to you. 
So when everyone starts to act a little bit too intuitively midway through cancer season, you are going to want to freak. You. So when people start to act up and really start to emote, Virgos can get into a really confused space where the things that they need, the pillars of logic they need to maneuver in this world start to melt. And cancer season can be really terrifying for Virgos, I think, because there is no controlling the ocean, there is no understanding the ocean, we know very little about the ocean, there's no analytical way to break the ocean down into parts and say, okay, well, this is why it does this, this is why it does that. It's just not like that. Like, the only thing you get from the ocean is mystery. So people also become super mysterious and Virgos can get frightened of the lack of accountability, the lack of responsibility, the lack of forthcoming communication. And it is for that reason that I think that you should you know, be careful about how much you're going out right now because towards the end of cancer season, things are going to get so intense that you will just be absorbing everybody's negative energy because you're out there cleansing and purifying and healing. And so you're naturally picking up a lot of stuff and people are letting so much gunk out that I just don't know how much you wanna be around that, you know? Now, of course, there are other Virgos who are going to be getting the gunk out. So if that applies to you, that's okay. Go out, get it out. It needs to get out, you know, detox. Um, let's see, Libra is talking of, speaking of detox. So you have these scales pretty um, weighed out. You know what's on each scale. Now you just have to figure out what you wanna do. Um, easier said than done. I know Libras who've taken years and still not been able to figure out, just like I can't figure out what I want to do with my hair right now, um, still haven't been figure, able to figure out what they want, even though they can clearly identify what the options are and what the issues are with both choices. That's where you find yourself. And unfortunately, you have this Neptune retrograde that's not going to make anything any easier. Um, because how can you make a choice when your mind and your subconscious wants to pull back and pull back and pull back and think about not even just why you did what you did, but when and how and how your childhood and how your love affairs from the past and how your, from everything from the color of your shoes when you were a kid, everything is going to be coming up in your mind, you know? And it's very hard to make a choice, but I think that that's why you're not supposed to make the choice just yet. So cancer season is about perhaps letting the tide wash everything off your scales except what's elemental. And by the end of cancer season and Leo season, you will be ready for action. There's a lot more to it than that, but just in terms of relating to other people. Okay, and then we move to Scorpio. So Scorpio, you are continuing in your extreme changes. There are a few things that I think have held you back that have come to light, come to light, come to light, and said doors keep opening, keep opening. And more and more you feel that people are revealing themselves to you, which is great, but terrifying, but scary, but why, but what. Um, but also I feel like those of you who want to will be able to now navigate between these open doors and see uh, perhaps for the first time how much was closed off to you or not offered to you just plainly out of jealousy, plainly out of competition, plainly, you know, how many times you were deceived so someone could have what you wanted or perhaps they knew they couldn't have it but they didn't want you to have it. This is all stuff that's really triggering to Scorpio. So they're like, what? What are you talking about? Is this about revenge? Is this about someone screwing me over or lying to me? Kind of. It's a month of intrigue but also a month of figuring out like what the intrigue was and being like, oh, wow, it's a new dawn, it's a new day, you know what I mean? Uh, I can hear that pump smashing pumpkin song playing in my head. Today is the greatest day. Like that's, I think Scorpio's come out of cancer season being reborn, being washed, you know, in that cardinal water that they need to get their salt water blood going, you know? 
uh, it's a time of great renewal and of acceptance and moving forward and you know beautiful new beginnings um, it's very positive it's very good and then we move to and from there we move to Sagittarius also incredible doing super super well um, you will find yourself feeling more and more like the places where you put your pins in are calling you, are pulling you. Uh, although work is wonderful and personal life is great and hobbies are good, there is something that is uh, pulling you a different way. And you may wonder like, hmm, this is really not about me, but it's very compelling and I, and I feel like giving it my attention even though it in no way has anything to do with me. And you start to have these really altruistic feelings about a lot of stuff. And I think it's because you guys as a collective Sagittarians are very aware and we've come to a point where awareness is necessary and change is necessary and Sagittarians seem to be on that forefront regardless of what career they're in of wanting to make others aware that it's time. Ding, 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 the bells are ringing. How that applies to you personally, we'll go into in the video, but the bells are ringing. Okay, and then we come to Capricorn. Oh boy, oh me, oh my. Everything is built up, must fall down, the tower card. Hey, you said it was gonna be kind of scary, but I didn't realize it was gonna be like this. Yes, things have to fall apart sometimes to get better. Yes, things have to be exposed. Yes, things have to be accepted. No, uh, we talked a little bit about how perfection will make you fragile. Those of you who were banking on your perfection were fragile and probably cracked. Those of you who were able to accept your lack of perfection have probably soared. And much in between. But the game is real for Capricorns right now. It's all or nothing. That's the title of your video. Great. Moving forward. <clears throat> and I'm going to do the videos in this order. We're going to do Cancer, and then we're going to do Capricorn, we're going to do Leo, we're going to do Aquarius, and so on and so forth. Um, so you'll have your reading in the next couple of days, inshallah. And then we move to... I can't believe I almost said Pisces. And then we move to Aquarius. So, again... Um, good stuff not quite as eventful i feel just because you have already done so many eventful things you've already put so many different you know lines in the sand and thank god i don't put up with that anymore and thank god i got rid of that and thank god i never have to answer that question again but i'm not really sure if consistent success and happiness is enough to keep your attention That's it. I, I have no further comment. No, I, I'm serious. Like, I just don't know if it's... If it's satisfying to you as a collective to just, you know, bask in personal gain. I think you're so much better than that. I think you guys get bored if there is no element to it of, you know, a broader community. So you might find that you really want to reach out more even though you're doing really well and everything is you know, going pretty okay, and even if you're not doing well, the answer may be in letting people have the feels and just going out there like a sponge and getting some feels. Collect the feels, you know? Yeah, it's a good time to harvest some feels. And then we come to Pisces. The culprit. Oh boy, Neptune retrograde oh my god what are we gonna do Pisces <laughs> you guys may actually love it because to you it's like time time doesn't exist time is happening at once time flows this way and that way like the ocean yay cardinal water we get to jump around in the water all the Pisces yay jumping into the past jumping into the future it's glorious I can't say a bad thing about it even though it's cancer season I feel like it's Pisces season because it's such a Neptune retrograde cancer season so you may feel like you're doing the way you love your season. You're feeling like that, but it's like warm or it's cold, depending on where you are. Disconcerting, but you feel like you have all that same power 
that you had when you know it was your time of the year so that has a lot to do with this retrograde pulling it has a lot to do with you know cardinal water but also just in terms of where you are in your life there is so much to swim right over there is so much you know when the wave comes and you jump over it or you swim under the wave there is so much to push past and leave behind and just there are no doors in the ocean but there can be distance you will never stop feeling for whoever you've ever been connected to and no one should ever ask you to but you can get some healthy distance from anyone who has you know betrayed you like someone who has shown you again and again that they just can't be in close enough proximity that you can feel them and so that emotional distance you know work on it meditate on it get away from those strings that are holding you to things that have now become so obviously toxic like if you don't know yet that it's toxic cancer season will show you everyone everyone's toxicity cancer season is like hydrogen peroxide on a wound all the waste material bubbles up to the top i don't know how they're gonna feel about that analogy actually i don't know i don't know if they're gonna be happy about that but there it is so we will read more from the odyssey for the videos i will inshallah do the cancer season meditation guided meditation tonight and that will be available on Vimeo below, or if you're a member of the channel, it will be, uh, you have access to it in the members only uh, community posts. And uh, yeah, we're gonna take a sale from the best restaurant in the universe, out the back into some sailing boats and out into the Cancer Cosmic Ocean. I have a feeling it's going to be a lot of fun, but that's just, you know, my cancer rising feeling. So in closing, pay attention to mother intuition. Spend some time in some salt water. Be quiet, be careful, be considerate. It's going to be quite a while. Mwah. Loves you. Sees you soon. I'll see you in the videos.